Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So this is an old aircraft, Piper Supercar PA-18-150. You can see the fuselage. This is a truss type fuselage, which has got various tubular members. The, these tubular members, they can carry both the tension and the compression loads. These are the longitudinal members called the longerons. Then there are some fillerins. These are also longitudinal members, but lighter in weight than the longerons called stringers. Stringers are numerous in number. Longerons, they are lesser in number. The aircraft components are composed of various parts called structural members, that is stringers, longerons, ribs, bulkheads, etc. The fuselage is the main structure or body of the aircraft. It provides space for cargo, controls, accessories, passengers and other equipment. In single engine aircraft, it also houses the power plant. In multi-engine aircraft, the engines may either be in the fuselage, attached to the fuselage or suspended from the wing structure. There are generally two types of fuselage construction, the truss type and the monocoque type. A truss is a rigid framework made up of members such as beams, struts and bars to resist deformation by applied loads. The truss framed fuselage is generally covered with fabric. The truss type fuselage frame is usually constructed of steel tubings welded together in such a manner that all members of the truss can carry both tension and compression loads. Nowadays, most of the aircrafts are made of semi-monocoque construction. The semi-monocoque fuselage is constructed primarily of the alloys of aluminium and magnesium. Although steel and titanium are also found in areas of high temperatures. Primary bending loads are taken by the longerons, which usually extend from across several points of support. The longerons are supplemented by other longitudinal members called stringers. Stringers are lighter in weight than longerons and are more in number. The vertical structural members also called as bulkheads or frames or formers. The heaviest of these vertical members are located at various intervals to carry concentrated loads and at points where fittings are used to attach other units such as wings, power plants, stabilizers. The stringers are smaller and lighter than longerons and they serve as fill-ins. The strong, heavy longerons hold the bulkheads and formers and these in turn hold the stringers. Stringers and longerons prevent tension and compression from bending the fuselage. Stringers <clears throat> are usually of a one-piece aluminium alloy construction and are manufactured in a variety of shapes by casting, extrusions or forming. Longerons like stringers are usually made of aluminium alloy. This is Cessna 206-H aircraft, which is a single piston engine aircraft with a semi-monocoque construction. The aircraft has got three sections. The forward section, which is from the front to this firewall. This is the forward section, you can see. Then there is a center section from the firewall to the end of the cabin. And then there is a tail cone section from here till the end. 
So this is another wing configuration. You can see the high wing. This is Cessna 206 aircraft. See the location of the wing. It is in the high wing position. This aircraft consists of formed bulkheads, longitudinal stringers, reinforcing channels, and skin. The principal material is 2024 alkaline aluminum alloy, which after forming is heat treated to 2024 T42 condition and is painted with corrosion resistant primer. All bulkheads in this fuselage are constructed of formed sheet metal or reinforced sheet metal. The frame members of the cabin section are consist, constructed of formed bulkhead channels. Bulkheads are formed U-channel sections. The construction consists of formed bulkheads, longitudinal syringes, reinforcing channels, and skin. In this aircraft, you can see the wings. They are of all metal construction with a strut bracing. They are semi monocoque construction and utilize two spars. Each wing consists of an outer wing panel with an integral fuel bay, an aileron, and a flap. Flanged upper and lower edges of all the ribs serve as cap strips, in addition to providing rigidity to the rib. The skin is riveted directly to each rib flange and provides the cellular strength for each successive rib bay. The nose, center, and trailing edge rib segments are riveted together through the front and rear spars to form basic airfoil sections. The stringers, which are made of alclad, stiffen the skin between the ribs. Spars are comprised of machine milled tapered extrusions riveted to sheet metal webs. So on this Cessna 206H aircraft, the wing is of metal construction, a semi-cantilever, semi-monocoque type, which has got two main spars. This is the front spar, the main spar. You can see the riveted line. This is the, your main spar going through, the, through and through. Then this rear line, riveting line, is the rear spar. Skin panels are riveted to ribs. Ribs, you can see here, the aircraft, the wing has got different ribs. The riveted lines, this is the first rib, the second rib, the third rib, the fourth rib. You can see the riveted line, this is the rib. The skin panels are riveted to ribs, spars, and stringers to complete the structure. You can now see the internal structure of the wing. This is the front spar. The front spar you can see from inside the wing. On the left side is the rib. You can see the rib. This is your rib. The trailing edge of the rib getting attached to the rear spar. This is the rear spar you can see. And this is another rib. So now you can see the internal structure of the wing. This is the front spar. You can see the front spar from inside. Then this is a, a rib attached to the leading edge attached to the front spar. This is the rib. The trailing edge being attached to the rear spar. This is your rear spar. So we, have, we had seen the two spars from outside also. You can see them from inside. This is the rear spar. This is another rib. So this is another wing configuration. This is a high wing. On a Sinus 912 motor glider, you can see the wing attached on the higher side. So this is another high wing example. Now we will see how this wing is attached to the fuselage. So you can see the wing attachment for the high wing Sinus 912. These are the two spars. You can see the spars moving through and through. This is one attachment on the right side, another wing attachment. On the left side, you can see the two attachments. This is another attachment on the left side. In addition to these two attachments, there is one more attachment in the center. So basically, three bolts which are holding the wing, the two wings of a high wing sinus 912 motor glider.
So you can see this is Hansa 3 aircraft, a low wing aircraft. You can see the wing attachment here, it is on the lower position. You are watching the wing attachment of Hansa 3. This is this bolt which you are seeing is the forward wing attachment of the right wing. There is another attachment on the rear side. You can see this, this bolt, there is a creep mark also. This is the rear wing attachment of the right wing. Similarly, on the left wing, we have the similar attachments, one on the front side and one on the rear side. You are seeing uh, the left wing now. This is the wing attachment for the left wing. This is the rear wing attachment. You can see the bolt, the rear wing attachment bolt with a big washer and similar attachment is there on the front side for the le left wing also. You can see the forward attachment of the left wing. This is the bolt. So you have seen the wing attachment bolts, two for the left wing and two for the right wing, two on the right side. So you have seen the wing attachment bolts. There are four in number, two for left wing, two on the right, on the, for the right wing, two front bolts and two rear bolts. So we are on Hansa 3 aircraft. You can see uh, this has a Rotex 914 F3 engine. This is the engine mount attached to the firewall. This is the firewall. These are the engine mount attachment bolts. Two on the right side. This is the top attachment bolt, the bottom attachment bolt. Similarly, two bolts on the left side. So these four bolts, they attach the engine to the firewall. You can see this is the engine mount. The engine is further attached to a engine frame on four points with which has the rubber mounts for absorbing vibrations. You can see the four mounts. This is the bottom one on the left side, the top one on the left side, the top one on the left side. Similarly, the two on the right side, one at the top and one at the bottom. So we are now watching the fixed landing gear of Hansa 3 aircraft. You can see this is the fixed landing gear which is attached by eight bolts in all to the fuselage. Four bolts are on the right side. You can see this is the landing gear attachment bracket. Two bolts two front bolts and then similarly two bolts are there on the rear side. So total four bolts on the right side and similarly four bolts, two on the front and two on the rear on the left side. So total eight bolts attach the main landing gear to the fuselage. So now we are on Cessna 206 aircraft which has a main landing gear and a nose landing gear. The landing gear configuration on this aircraft is a fixed one. You can see this is the main landing gear of the left side. Similarly, there is a on the right side you have a landing gear. This is your nose landing gear, which is again fixed. So you can see the landing gear attachment. This is the first attachment, second attachment and third attachment on the left side. So you can see the three attachment bolts which attach the main landing gear to the fuselage. This is, this is for the landing gear attachment on the left side. Similarly, we have the attachment on the right side. So you can see the nose landing gear of Cessna 206 aircraft. This is the first attachment point you can see and the second attachment point on this side. The two atta attachment points on a fixed nose landing gear of Cessna 206 aircraft. This is your steering bell crank. You can see the 
nose landing gear attachment of Cessna 206 aircraft. This is one attachment and then this is another attachment you can see. The two attachments for the fixed nose landing gear of Cessna 206 aircraft. Then deep inside you can see these things. These are the steering rods. This is the steering attachment. You can see this is your steering arm or the steering bell crank with the with one attachment, one rod attached here and the second one you can see deep inside here this is also attached. So the two steering rods these are your steering rods for the nose landing gear. You can see the shimmy damper here the shimmy damper location and the oleo-pneumatic strut and the nose gear fork. You can see the nose gear fork here. Good. So we are now on Piper Saratoga aircraft which has a retractable landing gear. You can see the right main landing gear of Piper Saratoga aircraft. These are the landing gear attachment points. You can see this is the landing gear attachment bracket. The four bolts, one, two, three and one on the back side, four. These four bolts plus one attachment here. These attachments attach the main landing gear to the fuselage. You can see the springs. Since this is a retractable landing gear, the spring, you can see the hook, the downlock hook. This is the downlock hook. The switches, the electronic switches, the downlock switches. Plus, you see the oleo pneumatic strut, the torque links, the tire assembly and the brake unit. So this is Piper Saratoga aircraft. You can see the landing gear of Piper Saratoga aircraft which is a retractable landing gear. Now you will see the retraction check the retraction and extension check of Piper Saratoga aircraft. Clear? Yeah. Up. You have seen that the landing gear, all three landing gears, both main landing gears and the nose landing gear have retracted. They are now up. We will now see how the landing gears are coming down. Down. You can see the gra gradual movement of the landing gears. They have come down now. They are completely down and locked. You can see the three gears completely down and locked. There is an emergency check also on this egg landing gear. We will do an emergency check. The retraction is normal. The landing gears are normally retracted and, and with an emergency selection they are made to free fall. You can see the landing gears again going up, up. You have seen that the landing gears have now fully retracted. The gears will now make an emergency free fall. Emergency down. You can see now the emergency selection has been take, put on and the gears are making a free fall. You have seen now the landing gears are now down and locked. They have made a free fall after emergency selection was done. So 
So the tail plane of Cessna 206 aircraft comprises of the vertical stabilizer, the rudder, horizontal stabilizer, elevator and an elevator trim tab. You can see the vertical stabilizer has got two spars, the first spar, the second spar and the ribs. The skin is riveted to the spar and the ribs. Similarly, the rudder, rudder has got a spar, you can see spar and a rib. The skin is again riveted to the spars and the ribs. The rudder is attached to the vertical stabilizer by means of three mounting bolts. You can see the three mounting bolts here, one at the bottom. You can see the mount, bottom mounting bolt, the middle mounting bolt and the top mounting bolt. You can see the top mounting bolt, rudder, this is the top mounting bolt, this is the middle mounting bolt and the bottom mounting bolt. Again coming to the horizontal stabilizer, you can see the horizontal stabilizer also has a forward spar and a rear spar. It has got a ribs and the skin panel is riveted to the spars and the ribs. Similarly, the elevator is also comprising of a spar and ribs. Skin panel is again riveted to the spars and the ribs. There is a balance weight at the elevator which is forward of the hinge line. You can see these are the balance weights. One on the right side, one on the left side. The elevator trim tab. You can see the elevator trim tab is again comprising of, it has got a rib and the skin panel is riveted to the ribs. You can see the elevator mounting. The elevator is mounted to the horizontal stabilizer. You can see the mounting of the elevator. Similarly, similar mounting is there on the left side also. So this is the right side. You can see the elevator mounting bolt here. This, this you can see there is a rod attachment. This attachment is for the elevator trim tab. This is the elevator trim tab. This is the elevator trim tab. You have seen the control attachment of the trim tab here. This is the elevator trim tab attachment. The elevator trim tab is hinge mounted. You can see the hinge here, hinge line. It is hinge mounted. The tail plane of a Cessna 206 aircraft is a full cantilever all metal construction with a vertical stabilizer, the rudder, horizontal stabilizer and an elevator with an elevator trim tab.